Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this trick game to the comp video, we're going to be focusing on Zen. Specifically, two different subject matters. The first of which are how AMD are going to be planning to cater to the overclocking crowd, and then we also have a few additional benchmarks. So, the first set of rumors, which is the overclocking, comes from the website bitsandchips.it. Now, Summit Ridge, as you're probably aware, is going to be the platform that Zen is going to release on. The top end processor is going to feature up to 8 cores, 16 threads, and naturally is going to support DDR4, PCI Express, Generation 3, and other bits and pieces as well. We'll get more into that in just a moment. It's been very much on the mind of folks how AMD are going to counter Intel, because one definite advantage Intel have had is overclocking. KB Lake and Skylake have both overclocked like demons, and even the older generation, for example, Haswell, has not exactly been a slouch when overclocking. Skylake, for example, the 6700K may only have four cores and eight threads total, but it doesn't take an inordinate, an inordinate amount excuse me, um, effort to get the chip to run at like 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz. And from what we're hearing about KB Lake, around the 5 gigahertz mark should be pretty achievable. There is definitely a lot of pressure on AMD. However, they seem to be happy to uh, rise up to the challenge. So there is going to be a couple of variants of Zen, not just the number of cores, but there is going to be a special 8 core based Zen part. Now, this is going to be an enthusiast grade chip. And this is going to ensure that you're going to have high overclocking margins, but also on top of that, you're going to have higher base frequencies compared to the other 95 watt variants. In short, theoretically, because this is cherry pick silicon, in other words, the best of the best, you're not going to need to put so much voltage through it to achieve a particular clock. Essentially, this is going to be a lot like the Unlock series from Intel, for example, the K series. However, do bear in mind that essentially that's the only way you can really overclock an Intel processor. Yes, you can do it via the front side bus, but it's not exactly the best way to do it. AMD, from what we can understand, are still going to allow you to overclock all of the Zen processors. We'll go more into a few specifics in a second. But the special variants are going to be optimized for enthusiasts and overclocking. So you may decide to go for this chip if you're not even intending to overclock because it has a higher base frequency or you might opt to go for it because you want to set some world records now of course there are a few questions for example well what is the price premium and unfortunately we just don't know that at the moment for example they could choose to just cost an extra 20 or 30 dollars or it could be a considerably higher amount which would be a bit of a shame now, as we all know, Zen is going to be released on desktops in the first uh, in the first quarter of 2017, which is going to, not going to be too far behind the release of KB Link, which is definitely going to be an interesting time for folks who want to upgrade. But the X370 is the motherboard that most enthusiasts are one are going to opt for if they are focusing on overclocking. Essentially, it's aiming to not only provide the most robust overclocking controls, AMD are calling them overclocking plus, just for your FYI, but you're also going to have 2 times 16 crossfire slash SLI support, and basically, in theory, this motherboard is going to be able to compete with Intel's best. One of the main positives of the 370 is a very sophisticated BIOS and GUI which means that you should be able to control just about every subtle nuance of overclocking your particular processor. Once again, we don't actually have hard numbers of the clock speeds and real world scenarios at the moment, especially with retail silicon. And really it all comes down to pricing, as you can probably imagine. But assuming AMD can be at least semi-competitive in pricing or performance, or you know, number of threads. Um, performance, of course, can be either IPC, it can be number of cords versus pricing, and all of the other bits and pieces which, you know, make up as processor launch. It's going to be at least a good counter to KB Lake. And I'm not saying that KB Lake won't have usage scenarios. I'm 
wouldn't be surprised if there are certain tasks or certain folks who would be better off with KB Lake. And as long as AMD can just chip away a good portion of the market for itself, I'm sure they'll be fairly happy. Now, there are also some benchmarks which have appeared regarding Zen. And this is for an engineering sample. Now, this has actually appeared on Reddit. And I'm a couple of days behind on this one, but still. And it's appeared on Blenchmark. That's B-L-E-N-C-H mark.com. Which is essentially an aggregate database for Blender tests. You may be aware that Blender... Um, has been pretty used by AMD to show off the performance of the processor and therefore that's why I wasn't like super oh my god I should put it together but since this uh, since we've talked about overclocking we might as well add this into the video so the processor is only listed as an AMD engineering sample which is a bit of a shame because we don't of course know certain criteria of the chip what we do know is that it managed on Blender version 2.77a to complete the task in a render time of just 69 seconds. There are a couple of interesting things. First of all, the OS was Windows Server 2008 64-bit, um, which is a bit curious, but it also means that the chip actually slightly beat out a Xenon E5 2680V2 processor. Now that chip does have 10 cores, and it's also marginally faster than a 2650 uh, V2, which is an 8 core processor. The only issue is both of those chips, are oh, Xenon by the way, um, do have a fairly low base clock. They run at just 2.8 or 2.6 gigahertz. Now from what we understand about engineering samples, assuming it is the same as what AMD themselves have shown off during tests, their chip is only running at, well, 3 gigahertz. Now, the reason I'm quite interested about this is because it should theoretically show that AMD have a pretty good chance of at least competing in multi-threaded tasks and positively decimates chips such as the i7-5960X. Now, once again, I would hasten to add that we don't know huge numbers of details regarding this particular chip. And it's possible that this is a server class chip. The main reason I suspect that is because it was running on Windows Server 2008, which I would imagine if they were running it on a traditional desktop-based system, it would be Windows 8, 7, or most likely 10. But... I guess it's possible that was the only chip they had, oh sorry, the only OS they had available, but that seems highly unlikely to me. But then again, it is engineering samples, so if they are on a machine and they're constantly switching backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and using different images of hardware, I guess it's possible. Unfortunately, there's no smoking gun there. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.